Hey, everybody. <clears throat> hey, folks. <sighs> All right. Wow. Y'all are jumping in. I love it. Um, so, hello again. Um, my name is Trace Nelson. If you've been following us for the last four months, um, you've realized that Mondays is the um, very dope Afropunk Black Food Folks collaboration conversation series. Um, you all have been so attentive and wonderful following us um, with a conversation series that started really kind of out of contextualizing COVID, um, thinking a lot about um, the spaces and folks who were being activated in this very particular moment. Um, this fall, the conversations are going to continue. I'm going to be bringing you folks that I admire still. Um, the list is legion. Um, but the conversation we have for you today is with someone I so admire, and we've been trying to get this um, situated um, for several months. And I'm so glad that it um, fortuitously managed, it, managed to happen now. Um, she works in the nonprofit sector. And I think so much about um, how we activate people and how we sort of uh, bring you guys tools that you might use in your own work. So um, I see her in here, um, but we have the very brilliant Lauren Darnell. Um, she's the executive director of an organization called Minnow, uh, made in New Orleans. And y'all are gonna get your life because she's so dope. But let's see. Hey. Hey. Hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to see your face. Oh, you too. You too. I was trying to organize my setup. <laughs> I think I got you, it, girl. Your face is all we need. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so glad to finally get this conversation um, sort of on the books because you've been somebody that I've been admiring for so long. I think a lot about New Orleans, um, the food space we all occupy nationally, globally, um, we sort of make it this homogenous thing. And I think our imagination on New Orleans is it is sort of singular, right? I think we um, talk a lot about um, the food space as it relates to large cities like New York or Los Angeles or London. But we forget that there are these unique spaces like New Orleans that give us such interesting and particular lessons that we should really be paying attention to um, that force us to look outside ourselves. So this has been a conversation I've been looking forward to for a minute. I I am so honored. Therese, I'm a fan. When I first met you at, uh, I think it was Omar Omar's dinner in New York. Yeah. That was the first time we, we spoke before then, but right. your warmth and your warmth and your care and your the way that you share i i it's an honor so thank you yeah i'm glad it could work out too so like i was mentioning in a little introduction there um the conversations i think kind of began when we were all at home and trying to figure just figure this out and in the food space i think um we were so impacted because our world kind of stopped and the i think the country looked at um, the news happening around what closing restaurants, what um, limiting the restaurant space is going to look like. And the their outlook from the outside in did not really reflect what was happening on the ground. Right. And following what you guys have been sort of dealing with in New Orleans, it's been interesting to see a city that is so particularly um, entrenched in the hospitality space have to reckon and have to kind of um, recalibrate. So I guess I want to start with one, how are you doing just personally? Yeah. But I mean, do you feel like there's some sort of like breath happening now in New Orleans or just what's, what's, what's happening on the ground there? I mean, today, uh, you know, we are expecting a hurricane today. So we have another hurricane coming. I think it's uh, this evening. So, you know, I'm from here, born and raised. So growing up in this environment, you do have periods where, you know, of time that, you know, you have to prepare and plan and, uh, you know, to evacuate, not evacuate, who can evacuate, who can't evacuate. It's it's a whole experience. And, and 
oftentimes when those things happen, particularly like Katrina, it really reveals the the differences and the inequities in our our city like very clearly. Um, like who is working, who isn't working, who has to stay to work, who you know who can go to the grocery store. So there's a lot there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that are at play when we have different sort of uh, natural <laughs> natural uh, when we have hurricanes. Hurricane season is is a special time here. So so today. We are preparing and planning and, you know, different people, you know, they may be prepping and uh, getting sandbags. We, we deal with our relationship to water here is very different. Um, but I think if I were to say, you know, New Orleans, we're very resilient people. I mean, you know, we, we, we figure out a way out of no way that is definitely in our culture and in our, our DNA here. Um, and, you know, talking to our alumni, people who, who have um, gone to culinary school, received a scholarship to go and have, are, you know, living and working here, you know, they're, they're figuring out their way. Um, and, you know, Minnow, the organization um, that I lead, you know, our work is to walk with them and to support them. So COVID has been very interesting. We, as you know, it was shocking to, you know, as it is for everyone of, of what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And you want to make sure our loved ones are safe and, and everyone's okay first. Um, and, and our alumni who we serve, they, everyone was, everyone was okay. Everyone was okay. We're figuring it out and taking care of their immediate needs and, um, you know, our, um, so yeah, so we, we were, we were okay. We, we figured, you know, we started to check in with people online. That was, that was a good, you know, community check-in that we did for a while. And then um, it's like, okay, so what else, what's next? What can we do, you know, next? So um, there's a couple, there's a couple ways I can totally jump into that, but I, I want to just answer that first question that we're okay. We're prepping for a hurricane. We're right. getting, right. getting our water and, and, and we'll, we'll see what tomorrow brings, but, but, but it, it's, it's a new, it's a new world right now. You know that. So. That's right. Mm. So, there's so much to talk about, and I want to. This you you brought up many things. We're going to circle back to, but I really want to sort of dive into you because you are a uniquely prepared person for the work you do. Um, I think if we sort of you know made a checklist of all the the, um, the characteristics and sort of the life experiences and the professional sort of markers that one would want to have to lead an organization like yours, you are unique uniquely prepared, and so. I mean, I don't know, maybe t you talked a little bit about the specificity of New Orleans, but um, being in a place like New Orleans, growing up and seeing this culture, this environment, um, I'm wondering how you, one, how it affected how you thought about the world, and also when you, because you mean your educational background really is, I mean, anthropology, women's studies, those things. And almost mm. deputize you into service, right? You can't unknow um, <laughs> what you learn in those spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know mm -hmm. if you could just again, like I, I think um, coming down to New Orleans, a lot of times when I first came, it was because of Zella and Dillard, um, and mm. I had no reference point for New Orleans except for what my own imagination was. And when I meet people like you who are from there and sort of have a, I don't know, personal stakes in that place, I wonder if you could. Just talk a little bit about what that means and what what it means for other people's imaginations on your city. Yeah, I mean, I you know being being from here and uh, you know my family going you know generations back um, from the state of Louisiana and um, yeah, I mean, I think I think you know growing up here, you have a different sense of of food, of music, of um, you know, you're different. You grow, you grow up knowing that you're different. And I always want to, you know, traveling outside of the country, which I've been fortunate uh, to do, you know, you realize that I don't, I've always identified as a New Orleanian. I don't really, I, you know, never really thought of like, oh, I'm American. It doesn't, it's just, I'm from New Orleans. You say New Orleans and everybody, everybody know, knows what, you know, has some sense, oh, is it the jazz? <laughs> like kind of, kind of place, you know? Um, so I, you know, knew something was special and I think you appreciate it when you leave 
And obviously you grew up just meeting people from different places coming to visit here too. Um, and, you know, I lived in New York for a long time. Um, my sister went to NYU. She needed a roommate. It was a good time in life to make a, I was at uh, grad school in feminist anthropology at University of Iowa. Um, and it was very, very white. And I was very um, anti it all at the time. And I just felt like this was not the path for me. I love school. I love being in school, but I wanted to experience more life and talk to people and be out and about. So I moved to New York and uh, I waited tables for, for really most of the time I was there. Also, you know, as we do hold down another job, waiting tables. I worked at Bryant Park. I worked at Cafe and Grill for a long time. Um, and uh, shout out to Cafe and Grill. That's right. <laughs> and um, yeah, you know, I, so I had, I got experience in the, in the industry there, but I also, you know, pursued, um, I started, I was a publicist. I worked for a small boutique agency and we did a lot of, um, we worked for Center for Constitutional Rights. And I always had a purpose and intention in, in the work that I'm doing. And my dad, um, my dad's a lawyer. He was the first in his family to go to college and he went to Yale and he, you know, uh, on Yale was doing their sort of diversity push. And so they were recruiting black students and they came down to New Orleans and my dad and um, you know, a couple of his friends were, you know, top of their class and recruited to go to Yale. So I was always instilled in the education is important and expanding, mm -hmm. like, you know, her, like exposing yourself to things you've never done before is really important. Um, so um, all of that to say that, um, you know, I, I sort of found, I always felt drawn to giving back and, and working um, with, uh, I taught tennis in Harlem. So uh, <laughs> there was, I was a, a certified tennis instructor. I've had many lives. My life is That's not right. linear and very sort no. of circular perimeter, you know, uh, but, but uh, it's always been consistent in supporting other people's growth, no matter what I do. Um, and I mentioned, I mentioned that to you earlier and, and, you know, it's, it's just very rooted in, in the work of, um, you know, uh, of being for other people. Um, right. which requires a, a sense of you, you know, not focusing on yourself and also not thinking that you know better than anyone else. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, from there, I, I discovered yoga. I was really out of balance, working very hard, very hard, two jobs, three jobs, volunteering and, and, and really um, exhausting myself. And I found that um, someone, you know, recommended yoga and and i i started practicing and um you know i found a coming back home to myself and i found i could you know really uh, be able to create things i wanted to create in my life when i got myself out of the way and i took care of myself and and that's that that didn't happen like one yoga class oh, that's like years no. and years um and eventually you know i was running to class every day and my teacher you know, sort of was like, uh, have you ever thought about teaching? And I was like, oh, wait, I can do that. That's something that you can do. Um, so um, I've been, so I've been in the practice and, and, you know, with the practice of yoga and philo yoga philosophy for uh, more than 10 years now. And it, it absolutely 100% informs how I view the world and how um, I, I, um, address and approach stress and and health and and um whole life health and and it informs what i eat and how i look at food and the value of food and and the hands that that you know create food so um i'm just reading these comments these are hilarious <laughs> um uh well yeah because i guess i'm also that's I I find that so interesting because it's this there is a you have a you just have a general calm about your personal presentation. Um and even just in times I've heard you speak or when you talk about the work you do is that it, it does feel to be this um clarity to it. I think 
the nonprofit spaces so or mission driven work in general um, ask so much of you so to have that kind of balance um, have a, a like a refuge for or, or um, have tools to help you navigate that is probably exponentially important um, I'm wondering about when the bug for mission driven work kind of, I mean you talk a little bit about your, your watching your pay your your parents your father um, engage with sort of civic minded work. Always, I'm sure that yeah. tra your travel, I'm sure, informs so much of um, that book. You're working in Harlem. I mean, Harlem becomes this, it's, it, Harlem is its own ecosystem. Um, but the sort of the bug for the possibility of mission driven work, um, it feels like it's yeah. probably caught around then. And I'm wondering yeah. if you, um, how do you prepare for mission driven work in that way? Like the nonprofit space feels um, particular, it feels, um, like it's either very highbrow organized or rough and tumble grassroots, and there's a lot in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering, like, how you sort of you catch that bug and know that this is work you want to do, but what kind of tools are you picking up along the way to be prepared, like organizationally? I mean, the PR thing probably is a big part of it. Um, yeah, yeah. Sort of seeing organizations on the back end are important, but um, yeah. just how does that bug get caught, and how do you think about? The tools folks could maybe use to organize their their thoughts around mission driven work. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, um, I think you know you want to do good in the world, right? Like you want to make mm -hmm. a difference. You want to be aligned to your purpose and hopefully help others. And you don't have to run a nonprofit to do that. You can, you know, an example of your work is a perfect example of that. You can you can um, you know continue to step towards what what excites you and what brings you life and then share that with others and that inspires something in others. I think, I think around, um, you know, I started, um, the yoga practices were providing so much for me. I was like, Oh, I really want to give this to kids, like kids and children, young people should have this because if I would have started doing yoga when I was, or practicing yoga when I was, you know, 15, like, wow, that would have really done something. And so that sort of started the, the, the the drive towards that and then I learned about fund you know fundraising it's, it's it's a whole other entity and so you know no one wants to think about money or trying to ask people for money that's not where it came from but it really it really came from a place of like how do I connect people who want to make a difference to make a difference because sometimes that's you right. don't really know you know and and um and so that's that's sort of that's how nonprofit work really sort of started to ignite a fire is that there's good work. There's a lot of people who um, can receive, um, you know, uh, support or, or, you know, may benefit from support. And how do you bring people um, to that work and connect them to that work? So I started, I, I started a nonprofit and doing yoga to kids in schools for a long time. And that was very rewarding. I, I taught and I, I was able to, you know, really teach deep breathing to calm down. And, and it was really, really helpful. And then, um, and then I learned that, you know, like nonprofit work is really hard <laughs> and you can't just do it by yourself. You need a village and a community to help you do that. And all the different pieces of, 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 of getting your message out and, and developing your program takes time. And so, um, I learned a lot and I definitely have arrived or, or there is no arrival, but I, I haven't, I haven't, um, this day to day is not, you know, by myself. It's, it's definitely engaging people, you know, um, in, in a belief system that you can make a difference, um, for, for others and make a difference for your, your community. And I lived away and I moved back home cause I wanted to help invest in the future of new Orleans. I just wanted to give back. It's like, I've been around the world. I've got all these goodies, how do I bring it back to help my own people? Um, and so that's, that, that's sort of the mission driven part on, on my end. Um, and it's, it really, I think, you know, learning is never ending, right? And you see, you see yourself in who you're serving and you see yourself on uh, how, how other people try to serve and other people you know, can serve in a way that's like, I know better, this is what you should be doing. And this is how you need to do what you need to do. Um, and for me, I, I really saw an opportunity to like, really like change the conversation or, or have this sort of 
paradigm shift of walking with people side by side. I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. Um, you know, how do I bring resources to you so that you can continue to, to do what, what's giving you passion that you can con continue to thrive. And, and, and so that's really how I came into the culinary industry into, into this work. It was, Hey, I think I have something to offer to help change the narrative about, um, you know, scholarship programs about, nonprofit nonprofit work to help black and brown people like there's a different way of doing this as a as a uh, you know as a black woman in new orleans how do i help how do i help other black people in a way that's not saying um you you know you have one leg <laughs> but 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 you're standing on your own two feet and wow like what what you have behind you and what's ahead of you um there's there's so much possibility if i'm just a stand for you with you um, that's right. So that's right. Yeah. I mean, that so much in that to, to just sit with because it's, I think it, it sort of, it's a different posture. I think sometimes, especially when we think about mission driven work in black and brown communities, it feels very often like folks are, it's a deficit model where you, you is sort of assigning a lack of um, to folks you're trying to empower. And that like you, you start from a negative from the beginning and it's right. something right. so interesting and like joyful about the way you all approach um, your cohorts. It's just a sense of like, you all have everything you need right here. Are we just going to make sure you get access to all the resources to be as dope as possible? So I, mean, I think this is a really <laughs> perfect part to kind of talk a little bit about. So there's the two things I really want to get into. One, um, the mechanism of hospitality in New Orleans. There's some staggering numbers and there's some staggering realities of what that looks like. We think about New Orleans in terms of our consumption of, you know, the joyful, the sort of commodity of right. this, this, this this particular right. kind of hospitality. But we don't really see, like, one. I was telling Zola this, and it's so, it hit me my first trip down where it was, I mean, I don't know, I'm a lifer, I'm a hospitality lifer. And so it was an interesting thing to see the revelry of, like, Bourbon Street and the revelry of, like, that kind of 24-hour in New Orleans. But I don't know what street it was, but they're, like, this is Main Street near, like, the casinos where the... Trolley, like the fancy trolleys go, but like the city trolleys, the city bus kind of lanes in the middle of the road. Canal Street. And I, yeah. Right. And you're watching the revelry a block over, and you're watching shift workers, you're watching chefs in whites, like waiting in the middle, and it feels like a divide. It feels like a completely different world. And I'm always struck by folks who make that mechanism work make the the ballet the sort of the play the the, mm -hmm. the sort of mechanism of this behemoth of a, of a hospitality industry in New Orleans work but don't ever get the shine don't ever get the recognition of what that takes the fortitude it takes but also the sort of responsibility of like holding up that legacy of of um culture right it's a very mm -hmm. particular posture and I, mean, I guess I'm wondering because we haven't really got, I mean, we, I, I sort of tagged and hope folks um, went over to your website, um, mentalfoundation.org. But if yeah. pe people aren't familiar with what your organization is, if you could talk a little bit about what it, what it is, what it, you know, what its function is. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, sure. Well, we are, um, we are in support of the advancement of black and brown people in the culinary industry. Um, we offer programming that helps to, um, we have a culinary scholarship program. So sending um, uh, people from New Orleans um, to International Culinary Center in New York. Um, and we are, we developed a build your business program where it's like helping, you know, support um, a food entrepreneurship. So if you're working on building your own business, pulling uh, different experts and people who are in the industry, outside industry to offer best practices of this is where, what you could be doing. And we got that, we got that place because I did sort of a needs assessment with our current alumni of like, 
hey, is there anything that you work on that you need support with? Is this something that, you know, you feel like you could grow in that we could offer and connect to? We also just sort of source opportunities, different, different, you know, events or different, um, you know, resources to, um, to our alumni. Um, and we do community work. We had a, a really great partnership in, in supporting, you know, developing more black food writers in the city. Um, you know, young ones working with young people and, um, you know, just again, celebrating the culture of New Orleans, but also thinking about the future. Um, and, you know, where we are right now is really working with, you know, it's one thing to provide resources. It's another thing to zoom out and look at the whole, the whole picture, the whole industry and the issues um, that it has. And what are the ways in which you can sort of move the needle or move it a little bit forward? And a, a, a big intention of us, a big intention was visibility and exactly what you're talking, talking about. Asking questions of why there aren't more executive chefs in New Orleans that people um, know about. We did a, a, a chef portrait project where we went, it was a partner um, of ours, um, came down from San Francisco. It was his project that was working on and he came down, he was like, look, I have this idea. I really want to take pictures of, you know, the cooks and chefs in their in their whites and have a picture of that. And I said, absolutely. Like, how do we help to get the message out? Because visibility, invisibility is a huge, huge issue, right? Oh There's a God. huge issue with, with um, you know, I, I feel like we've got to talk about um, New Orleans runs on people, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's, I think that's, um, that's something that really, you know, drove drove me and in, in being in situations where you walk into a restaurant and every everyone everyone in the restaurant is white and everyone in the kitchen is black and i was like how are we still here what and, and looking at all the management and ownership positions that are available you know the percentages here about black owned businesses there's two percent the out of all of the the businesses owned two percent are black owned here two percent and there's a, a in a city perpetuated a city. on this you know, blackness. You know. yes. Yeah. yes, it's crazy. All the all of the sales receipts for for business, okay, out of all of that, the money that's made here, two percent are black owned business. That has got to change. We're not Atlanta, right? And I was I would say I can't compare ourselves to Atlanta. We're no other place than what we are. And somehow for so long, there's a lot of people invested in keeping the system the way it is. And so we're, we're working to highlight of like, let's, let's follow the money where it is. Let's follow um, who, who are the, you know, cultural bearers and, and, and how, do, how do we celebrate them? How do we, we talk about, um, you know, the food, but talk about who made the food, talk about where the food comes from, talk about where rice comes from, talk about where beans come from, talk about the crops and the people that were brought over here. And for years, yeah, years and years, you know, people have been profiting off of other, of other, of other people's labor. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think that it's easy to gloss over, um, those issues because you have such a good time when you come here and, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really trying to put, you know, a kind of break that up, you know, like the, yeah. the impacts of COVID really brought to attention of the health inequities, the, the disparities of black people versus non-black people here. Um, you know, and that, and everyone was like, I'm so shocked. I'm so shocked. I'm so shocked. I'm mm. like, no, you're not. How are you shocked? You can't be shocked. I, but, but it's now in your face every day. And now your health is dependent on that person's health, right? That's so, right. and, and, and where, where, and people, and after George Floyd's, uh, Floyd's murder, excuse me, after George Floyd's murder, people start feeling uncomfortable. And it's, 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 and people are asking questions and people are, and it's like, the reason why people come here and feel so good and can let their hair down is because the black people of New Orleans bring you in. They're open, they welcome you and they put your arms around you. They don't care from where you're from. They will invite you in, eat my food, listen to my music, dance with me. Cause that's how beautiful the soul of the people of New Orleans, how, how we are. And, and, and the problem is, is that 
the power dynamics, the, the racism is very, very, very deep. And the colorism is very, very deep here. And I know light-skinned black person in New Orleans, I know. I know the whole deal in and out. So what I'm saying is the reason why people feel so good here and the reason why, you know, people all over the world come here is that we do have something special. But yeah. my work with Minho and our, our alumni and all of our supporters and, and what we're trying to do is to, is to change the conversation and to change the power, power dynamic and, and really bring, um, bring that, that number way on up, <laughs> way That's right. That's right. on up, way on up. It's got to, got to happen. That first of all, amen to everything you just said. Like, thank you, thank you. No, thank you I for preaching because we. That's exactly what I was trying to get at. Um, yeah. There's so there's so much in that though that I'm wondering about because there is. I think sometimes um, there's this moment we're having where people are. Like to your point, this kind of full awakening, right? Full, like, out, you know, outrage, full, like, activation. And it's been beneficial in some ways because I think that there's some organizations that maybe have, I don't know, I don't know, I can't talk to motivation, but I can, I have certainly seen um, some organizations that have historically been um, less entrenched in equity have to be um, more mindful of it. And that's, translated into resources opening up in crazy ways i've seen i've talked to shakira assembly many weeks back and she was talking a lot about how city resources just magically opened up all of a sudden <laughs> um so cities are thinking about you know food equity and uh, food justice in different ways and sort of thinking about how that should translate beyond this moment mm. but i guess i'm wondering about because they're, they're like this the things i'm always interested in things we can't change right like you can't i don't know that we can we're not going to fix systemic racism in one snap, right? Nobody's going to get so amazingly woke that they're going to sort of dismantle racism in a matter of months or years or whatever. But yeah. there are many, this seems like a multifaceted issue here, right? I think, I mean, the work you're doing is certainly asking for or sort of contending with your city and, um, and contend and sort of asking hard questions of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And I would love, if you want to talk a little bit about that, that's fine. But there's also something I'm interested in with reference to how I ask this of New Orleans all the time, but I guess I'm, I want to ask you because I want to, I wonder if you have opinions about the way, the way the rest of the world consumes New Orleans. Because in moments like this, right, where we are having to think, people kind of trap, I think New Orleans, I think cities like Las Vegas, people are still coming into your city still, and there's a sense of, that it's up for grabs, it's still consumable. And in this moment, are you, what are things that people should be thinking about when they come and have their big game, and want to kind of, mm -hmm. are, what, are, what are the ways you wish people, people dealt with or sort of engaged with New Orleans that they yeah. maybe are mindful of? Yeah, Therese, so good, so good. Um, so I mean, at first, the first, the first sort of part of what you were saying, I, I would speak to like, you know, what is real change, real difference, real, like, what does that look like? For me, it's policy. It's real. It's like actually impacting policy. Um, I joined a, 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 a policy advocacy committee, um, you know, and they make recommendations to the city. And I feel like that is the work. That's sort of the real work of like, how do you make this a, a standard, an ordinance? How do you make this like, you know, where this is a requirement for you to get your license in order to do this? What are our standards on how we're issuing out licenses? Or, you know, like those kind of things. Who's getting the permit so that they can put up where, here, and who, whatever, you know? And there's, there's a whole conversation I can get into about that when we talk about Essence Festival and, and the business opportunities and what happens. Right? Right. I, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm just saying that there's something, you know, we, we got to ask these questions, you know, and I think that there's something really, really, um, there's something really, really um, important about reflecting on that and asking those, in, in the, in, in, like, in asking those questions. So, um, for, for me, um, I think of advocacy and I think of, of, of policy making a difference. And, and it comes down each restaurant and each, you know, 
business can make its can relatively make its own decisions, you know, so um, there's a little bit of um, there's work, there's work to be done there. Yeah. When you talk about consuming of New Orleans, right? I, I look, we have to take responsibility also for how we present ourselves and how okay. we dictate the relationship that we would like to have with the people who come here too, right? So it's, it's not all on one, you know, there, it's not all on, on y'all. It's, it's, it's a responsibility because mm. it's a collaboration. It's a, 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 you know, exchange of energy, you know, exchange of, 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 um, of, of a relationship. So I feel like, you know, I always encourage when you do come here to support black owned businesses, um, to ask, to, to, you know, to look around, um, and ask, ask questions to, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, be thoughtful of your choices and how you spend your money. Um, yes. you know, New Orleans, we're very, we have so many nonprofits that help so many different aspects, right? Cause nonprofits exist to sort of fill those holes and those gaps and to provide services for support. Um, but we have, we have, we have tons. I think if every person who came down here donated like 25 or $50 to a local organization and then went home and told them about organization, just every time you come, just drop into a, a list. I can put a list on our website. I'm happy to share right. what that is. Um, then I think, you know, I think that would, that would make a tremendous difference, right? Because then we're talking about the collective opportunity to make a difference, you know? Um, That's right. And I, and I think, you know, I've, I've, I've had friends who, who've come, you know, before COVID and, and they were, you know, like, who should I hit up? Where should I go? What, what should I do? And I think that those are great questions to, to be asking and, and thinking and, you know, what, um, because a lot of people who get press here, a lot of people get covered, you know, it's a lot of times the same people. And so yeah. you do have to do a little bit of research <laughs> to find, to find who it is, you know, and where to go. Well, thankfully, but that's, that, that's the other thing that gets so maybe frustrated, frustrated is the wrong word, but I'm always fascinated by because in the good laws 2020 or in with internet and sort of social media, the way it is, there are so many intentional organizations, spaces, even just Instagram pages that give you these resources, right? Like there's, so you can do your Wear due diligence Black with Nola very eats. little. Wear Black yes. Nola Eats. Shout out to Wear Black Nola Eats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, I mean, like, I think about Malik, um, Bartholomew, like his NOLA tour, like, you don't have to, your hotel's, like, you know, recommendation for tours does not have to be your, your go-to. He will take you through New Orleans in a way that is so different and unique and interesting. Um, just this, it just feels like there's so many better opportunities for people to really engage with real New Orleans. So I just wanted to hear you say that because I think it's just to be mindful of where you're going to. Mm -hmm. and no, it's important. Sort of, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like we, we I want to leave them for questions. Um, this has been so, yeah, you just so, so dope. I want to talk, but, I want to, yeah. go ahead, sorry. No, you know, because I just want to make sure we cover Yeah, everything. I want to make sure I mention um, we have a, a, a bees grocery fund right now. So this is important okay. because one of our chef, Cassidy Lewis, um, she is a baker. She's from um, Louisiana, um, outside of New Orleans. She's a culinary <laughs> um, scholarship recipient. She studied pastry at inter, um, ICC in New York. She came okay. down here. She worked with Nina Compton, she worked with um, opening a, a, a new restaurant. She has a lot of experience and she's amazing, human one, but two, she's just an amazing baker. And she wanted to launch a grocery fund to help hospitality workers and essential workers. Um, it's a $50 mini grant and we're fundraising okay. for that now. Um, okay. And you can donate through our website um, but this is all, this is literally our program in action. Since we have a, a, you know, tax exempt status, we could help her live her vision to help other people through her baking. Um, yeah. and she's just like everyone else who was working on, you know, trying to, um, you know, uh, get her, herself together in her career and, and share. She's so talented, um, and big things are going to come from her. And while she's going through her own struggle, she's helping other people too. So That's um, right. it's called Bees Grocery Fund. You can go to our website and donate 
five, 10, whatever you have. Um, we, we give out our grants monthly. Um, we gave out 15 grants last month. It makes a huge difference. Um, and um, we're really, I'm really proud, proud of, of that program that just came out of Cassie was like, Hey, I want to do something. We're like, okay, let's do it. So, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's something really beautiful about the relationship that you have with, um, with your, I, what's the terminology you use? I think. So we, we, we refer to them as alumni. Okay. Uh, Cause they're essentially, but they're really like ambassadors of the program or about. That's right. Mean, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah. But there's something really beautiful about the way you think about the relationship, right? Because I think something, there's a, you sort of, you take these kids who are from this place, from this beautiful, have this, in the marrow of their bones, have this culture, and you send them here to get educated in a wonderful institution, but one that is steeped in very traditional um, mindsets around this industry and they become deputized almost to sort of and be and, and empowered to represent New Orleans but also I don't know it feels like um, demystify New Orleans and translate New Orleans but also um, the work you do of like, what, like tracking them through their careers is so fascinating and I, I find sometimes that there's limitations to nonprofit work, right? Like research, whether it be financial resources, whatever. Um, when it's when there isn't necessarily intentionality in the relationship, then folks kind of get left after the context of the program is over, and it just feels like there is no over for you guys. You are, I mean, the, the folks who come, the alumni out of your program, are prolific, and it just they they seem different, they work different, the posture uh-huh. they enter this industry with is just different. Um, and it feels like it's because they are kind of, there's a, a covering over their lives and their work um, mm-hmm. that you all kind of empower them with. And it's, I wonder, I don't know, I just, I want, I wish that more spaces thought that holistically about um, how they send folks out of, or how they send folks out into the, this world. Um, this food space is hard, man. It's a, it's yeah, a no, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's really hard. And I feel like, you know, it's such an honor to celebrate someone's triumphs and, and literally, you know, uh, say, you know, is there anything that you need right now? You're good. Is there anything else that I could help or provide, you know? And, and again, we're not a perfect organization. We're still figuring it out. And also, you know, we, we are small and mighty and we do a lot, but I, you know, I, I'll let them know, like, you know, one example I'm thinking of is like, you know, um, there's nothing we can do right now, but like a conversation sometimes just helps, you know, yep. like just saying yep. like, Hey, how are you? How's it going? You okay? You know, like those, That's sometimes right. that, that is enough. Um, and I, I'm thinking of one particular um, chef, you know, um, I'm, he called me last week and he just got hired as a sous chef and he's been trying, he's been working hard for many, many years. His first, his first job was at wow, wow, ring, wow, ringery. And um, he got passed over several times for this, for this position. And he was doing the work of sous chef for years, but not getting the, mm-hmm. the you know, and, and I was saying, you know, you want to leave, you want to walk away. And he's like, Nope, put my head down, do my work. And I finally it will come. And, to hear him call and just say, Hey, I just wanted to let you know <laughs> I made sous chef. <laughs> and I was like, Yes. Like, That's right. you know, like, because you know the amount of effort and work that was put in to get to that position, right? Yep. You know amount amount of heart and hours upon hours and sacrifices made for that. And so sometimes it, it is it is helpful to have someone um or have an organization that is behind you and saying, You got this. And we see and we hear you and we understand the challenges that you have. And we're working to remove those challenges or remove those barriers with you. And it might not happen in our lifetime because there's a lot of work to be done, but you're not alone in this. And I think that there's some quality to that 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 I'm finding that is is deeply, deeply rewarding and and really, really an honor to participate in. Um, And so... So I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm very, very um, thankful and it's an invitation, right? It's an invitation for the alumni to work with us. It's not a requirement. 
you know, that it's, it, it's, it's an invitation. Um, and it's also use of their image, which that's asking permission if that's okay as well. And, right. you know, we, we hired a photographer to take these portraits that are on our website. Cause I thought that was important. That's a, that's a whole thing. That like way, the, the, you know? that, cause that was just the other part, right? Cause again, like this is, we have been, we've been talking for the last 40 plus minutes with Lauren Darnell. She's the executive director of Minnow Made in New Orleans. Um, so it's um, minnowfoundation.org. Um, and you can, I mean, you can, please follow her here on Instagram, but also go over to the website and donate your dollars to, in support of this extraordinary work. But there's something really beautiful about the way you all, it just feels like you are honoring your city and honoring these brilliant young people. And the, I mean, just the images along your Instagram, but just the images on the site, like just, it's something so like I want to cry every time I see it because it's so there's this posture sometimes where we we don't I don't know it's just this sort of performative nature sometimes of black images that absolutely. signals and there's signals to people of it as well yeah absolutely yeah and these true. images are just so beautiful and you're just setting them up to sort of I don't know the posture change is just it's everything and it's so dope mm. to watch. Mm. Mm. Thank I you, don't Tariq. know, man. I just I, so I don't. <laughs> um, I want to leave. I, please, if anybody has questions, we have probably another ten minutes. But um, I don't know. I I wonder. Maybe you can talk a little bit about. I mean, are are you all looking forward? I mean, I think that there's people yeah. about triage, right? There's so much like and there was immediate work that had to be done, right? And I like what you talked about in terms of evolving based on need. So sort of like. Mm -hmm tracking um the city tracking your alumni and sort of seeing what next next steps next projects are based on that but um what is what does mill look like in the next year well um i mean one we're we're thankful that we're still here <laughs> that's right so, that's that part you know, that part we are not here if people don't give to fund this work so I felt, you know, very, very um, thankful and in, in gratitude that I get to continue this work um, that that I love and 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 that we're able to expand outward. You know, um, being nimble during this this mm. time of uncertainty. Um, but we're, you know, we're focusing on build your business. We we just got a grant in from the Restaurant Community um, Workers uh, Foundation. That's right. Which, uh, which is huge, um, which we are super, super excited to help roll that into our builder business to, to really um, build resources um, for expanding. We're really trying to develop, um, you know, a black indigenous POC um, network of hospitality professionals. So we want to just be able to share resources out. So we're trying to expand um, and, and develop that um, build your business, that network. Um, our, our grocery fund, we're going to keep rolling out because we know that that is always, that's going to be a need for the foreseeable future yeah. as people navigate the ups and downs of, of what's happening. And the, the network, the network for hospitality professionals, I'm excited because there's an opportunity there about transferable skills. And like, what are that's your right. skills? What are your skill sets? What are your strengths? And where do you build off of that? And where is that going to take you? Um, yep. And sometimes that might take you out of the industry. And that's okay, but where, what, but identifying that is, is a good start. So you're starting to look at, um, you know, something more than just your job, and you know, you're yes. looking at more, more than that. You know, um, we're going to continue to work with with restaurants and and have conversations about diversity, equity, inclusion, and and um, and their hiring again policy, their policy procedures, and and having conversation with that, and and and. Again, Minna, we're a bridge. We're we're connecting with people to to have conversations. Um, but but we're we're we continue to get more clear on our work. We continue to get more clear um, as as we grow. Who we serve, they're growing. Um, That's right. Chef Byron Bradley is on fire. Yes. Chef, you know, two brothers, two brothers, one love. Um, Chef Josh Blue, uh, Joshua Blue, Chef Blue. That's the new sous, sous chef. That's right. Um, until we make that announcement, will be coming out. Uh, I think uh, next this week, actually. Um, Chef Cassie Lewis, who I mentioned, Bees Grocery, she's yep. back in New York. Our recent culinary uh, culinary recipients, uh, Javante Smith, he's in New York. Kyle Wilson here. 
So we, look, we there. There's a lot. There's a lot to get up and do, and and really just to um, focus on um, focus on 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 moving forward, and and you know not having to do everything, but but doing That's a couple right. things really well. That's, That's cool. right. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Oh, this has been so good. Um, again, you guys, please, um, mentalfoundation.org. You can find out about all these amazing programs. If you follow in, um, them on socials, you will be up to date with all the amazing things they have going on. Um, honestly, the, the conversation series you guys are doing, um, just it, it's so dope to just tune in and see these dope brown faces, these young people so <laughs> inspired and I don't know, just empower, especially in moments like this, is such a, a blessing to watch. And um, yeah, if you want to, if you just want to see what they're doing, support. If you're an organization that thinks you may be aligned with the the, the message yeah. and the, the mission, please reach out. Lauren is reach out. always yeah. open. Um, but yeah, just follow and support. This is somebody said this is God's work. It absolutely, I think it's deputized work. It's sort of like soul work. You mm. see a need and you just get after it and it's such a I'm sure it's a, a wonderful pa- um, posture to sort of live through right to mm-hmm. be in this these chaotic moments to be doing mission driven work it kind of you yeah. don't have to question your life you, you know clearly what like why you get up in the morning yeah yeah may, may we all continue to take deep breaths <laughs> breathe, breathe 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 deep take one step at a time that is definitely true now, we talked about mental. Are you, you said are you you so use? You, I mean, your yoga practice is also a thing too. If people want to follow your yoga yeah, teacher, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yes. Um, I I offer a Tuesday evening Zoom yoga class through hey. a, a, a local a local um, studio, but I'll be offering more classes through the Space Body Mind Consulting that yeah. um, I I train with them and work with them and. Um, We'll be offering different different times with that, but yeah, I I encourage, um, yeah, yoga. Start where you are. <laughs> you don't have to do everything. If you just breathe together and breathe with yourself for an hour, um, or however long the time the practice is, um, an hour seventy five minutes, it's it it makes a difference. So that's right. Yeah. I love you. I appreciate you. Oh, I, I, you I appreciate too. your time. And we will be in contact. I appreciate you taking the time out to do this. We've been wanting to do this. This has been, this has been one of my wish list conversations since the beginning of this. So I'm glad we got to do it. Me too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Therese. I hope to see you uh, soon in person when we can. That's see right. You. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Same here. All right. Okay. All right. <sighs> That was so good. All right, y'all. Um, thank y'all for riding with me. Y'all have been pretty consistent in the comments and um, riding this whole conversation. Um, we are back at it week to week. Um, the next, I have uh, some amazing conversations coming up. Um, Lauren has been someone I've admired for so long, and she's just so brilliant. So if you, again, minnowfoundation.org. Um, also, just um, right here on, on Instagram, follow them and sort of just keep current with how brilliant the organization is. Um, these conversations are brought to you in collaboration with Black Food folks. We are a collective of Black Food creatives globally. We um, host our own conversations over on Black Food folks. Um, and today, um, we had this is sort of the lead in to our day, our month, our weekly programming. Sorry. Um, so today we have um, Cheryl Slocum in conversation with Aaron Hutchison at one. So take a breath and head on over to Black Food Folks um, for their conversation at one. And then um, uh, Patient Chef Amber Croom is in conversation with the very brilliant, very vivacious um, Paula Velez at four, I think, three or four, four o'clock. Um, so just going over if you haven't already followed follow black food folks and keep current with the conversations that we have all week long um i'm back on friday over on black food folks with uh chef uh joseph perry and yeah man i'll be back here next monday um yes in the comments uh lauren dropped the mental foundation.org but i'll be back here next monday at noon so thank you all for paying attention and i'll see y'all next week And go over to Vaku folks right now at 1 o'clock.